means we can decide our future together, uh, we can decide, uh, we can take back control, as the phrase goes, of our money, our borders, our laws uh, together, and uh, we will be able to do uh, free trade agreements around the world. And uh, we can also uh, build now, after three and a half years, uh, we can build now on our relations with our friends and partners in the EU. And it will be a very exciting period now, as it were, to get to that, the positive uh, side of, uh, of that uh, project. The, the extraction having been done, the building now begins. And I'm very confident that when uh, my colleagues in Parliament study this agreement, that they will want to vote for it on, uh, on Saturday and then in, uh, in succeeding days. Uh, this is our chance in the UK uh, as Democrats to get Brexit done and come out on October the 31st. This is our chance to focus on our priorities, uh, the people's priorities, uh, the NHS putting 20,000 uh, police on the streets, uh, lifting up funding of education across the country, uh, the biggest expansion of the, of the living wage. Those are the things I think the people of our country uh, want uh, us to be focusing on uh, in addition to Brexit. We've, we've been at this now, as I say, uh, for three and a half years. It hasn't always been an easy experience for the UK. It's been long, it's been painful, it's been divisive. And now is the moment for us as a country to come together. Now is the moment for our parliamentarians to come together and get this thing done. And, as I say, to begin building a new and progressive partnership with our EU friends, uh, with whom, of course, we share so many priorities. Now, I have to go to dinner. <laughs> I'm late, uh, fairly soon. Uh, but I'm, and I'm told to keep this very tight indeed. Uh, but I'm going to, I'm going to go to, uh, to Laura uh, Koonsberg of the BBC. Uh, thank you very much. We can keep this very tight. Two very quick questions. Why are you confident this can get through Parliament when it doesn't seem to be the case at home? And what on earth will you do if this falls on Saturday? Well, uh, thanks, Laura. I think that uh, there is, uh, as I say, a very good case for... Uh, MPs uh, across the House of Commons to uh, express the democratic will of the people, as we've pledged many times to do, and uh, to get Brexit done. And as I uh, have never tired of telling you, and I repeat again, I don't think there is any case for delay. Uh, we should get on and get it done by October the 31st. Robert. Uh, Prime Minister, was there literally no other way of getting the deal other than to turn over your partners in government, the Democratic Unionist Party? I, I think this is a very good deal for every part of the uh, UK and uh, particularly for, uh, for Northern Ireland. And I would point out that, uh, as I say just now, uh, from the beginning, Northern Ireland will be able to uh, join with the rest of the UK in doing free trade deals around the world uh, and, uh, and all the other benefits that flow from membership of the, uh, the UK uh, market. And, of course, uh, without having a, uh, a, uh, any checks, any infrastructure of any kind uh, at the border in Northern Ireland. And I think, in that respect, it is a, a great success. I'm going to take two more questions, and I'm going to go to uh, the distinguished uh, Mr Dimbleby in the front. Uh, how will this um, deal help heal the deep divisions over Brexit in the country? I, I think that's the, a, a very, very important question, and I, I do think that the answer is that it will, because what it will enable us to do is to get, as I say, the process of extraction behind us and enable us to come together and focus on building a new partnership with our friends uh, across the channel, our friends, not just our friends in Brussels, but obviously in every other European capital. And one of the things that we're doing is building and strengthening our, our bilateral relations uh, as well and expanding our, our network in, uh, across the European capitals. George Parker. And then that's it, I'm afraid. 
Um, come on, you can, you can miss, miss, a bit of the, miss a bit of the dinner. No, I was asked to take four questions. I'm going to okay. I, take, a, take a few more. Um, Prime Minister, yeah, take a few more. Prime Minister, we heard what Jean-Claude Juncker had to say earlier about the fact that he personally didn't think there was, should be an extension to the Brexit process beyond October the 31st. Did you ask your fellow leaders to make a similar commitment and have they done so? Well, my, my view has been very clear for a long time. I, just don't, I don't think that delay is, is to the advantage of the, of the UK or indeed of the, of the whole of, of, the, uh, of, of, of Europe. I think people want to, to move this thing on. It's been going on for a, for a long time, uh, and, uh, and that's a view that seems to be, uh, to be quite widely shared. Uh, Tom, and then Pippa, and then that really is it. OK, Tom, Pippa, and then Beth, and then that's it. Prime Minister, you've suspended the whip from 21 Tory MPs when they voted for the Ben Act. Will you treat this vote on Saturday as a similar confidence motion, and will you suspend the whip from any Tory MPs who don't vote for this deal? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to get into whipping uh, in, this, uh, in, in this illustrious form. What I, what I will say is that I do think there is a, uh, a very good case for voting for this deal on all sides of the House, and uh, we will certainly be taking that vote very seriously. Um, Prime Minister, I have a second, yep. second uh, quick go on, on the whipping. Would you restore the whip for the 21 MPs that you have, um, that you have uh, ejected from the party? And, what, and why should Labour MPs particularly trust you to deliver on your promises in the political declaration over workers' rights? That's a big problem for yeah, them. Thank, well, look, I, thank you, uh, Pippa. On the, on the, uh, on the vote, uh, it's a big and important vote, and we'll be, we'll be making further announcements about that in, in, in due course. Uh, and there are a series, as, as colleagues, as, as you understand, there are a series of votes. On the political declaration and that text, uh, I do think it is a good text. Uh, it, it gets to the heart of, of what we want to achieve as, as a UK in our relations with the EU in the, in the future, a, a best-in-class free trade deal, but also a fantastic new deep and special partnership that we want to, uh, to build. Yes, it, of course, it does uh, also contain uh, important provisions and commitments that this country gladly makes about our determination to maintain the highest possible standards, uh, both for the environment and for social protection. Uh, we make those uh, commitments gladly, and they're entirely right uh, for our country uh, to do. Uh, Beth, positively last question. Thank you. Uh, Prime Minister, Nigel Dodd said earlier today uh, that you were too eager by far to get a deal at any cost, and the cost has been their support. You have the deal, but you don't have the votes. Your predicament no better than Theresa May's. Are you making the same mistakes that she did? Well, I think, as I say, thanks, Beth, I think that uh, this is a, a very good deal. Uh, I'm very confident that when MPs uh, of all parties look at this deal, uh, they will see the merit of supporting it, uh, getting Brexit done on October the 31st, and honouring the mandate of the people, honouring the promises that were made repeatedly uh, by parliamentarians uh, to the people to get Brexit done, and giving us all a chance uh, to move on. I think the imperative is, is very, very strong. The opportunity is great, uh, so let's do it. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, I'm so sorry.